In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at view three. Now, there are some tutorials out here that walk you through the composition API in a view two project, but we are going to take a look at view three. We are going to use the pre alpha source code. We're going to download it from GitHub, build it, and then use it in a simple example. And we'll do it right after this. Welcome back friends, my name is Dan Vega and I run the website danvega.dev. I've been a software developer for over 20 years now and I really enjoy sharing my passion and experience with you through a collection of articles, videos, and courses. If you're interested in that type of content, please consider subscribing to this channel and I'll do my best to release new videos weekly. With that, let's go ahead and move on to today's tutorial. All right, so as I said in the introduction to this tutorial, we are going to build out a simple example in view three. Now, what we're gonna be working with is something called the composition API. And there is a lot that went into this new feature in view. And fortunately for us, there's some really great documentation um, by the view core team. Uh, and I'll leave this link below, but it is the View Composition API um, RFC, kind of the request for comments, everything that went into creating this feature. And then there's also an API reference up here in the upper right. So if this is new to you, I would take some time to go through this document. It really kind of explain, it, it explains like why the motivation for creating this feature and then it goes into like detailed design, like here's an intro introduction to the API, here's how you kind of use all of the different um, features within the composition API and so on. So go through this document if you get a chance. What I wanna do is actually create a simple counter in view two, so we can see kind of what that counter looks like being just put on a page, and then we'll create that same example over in view three. So normally when we create a view two project, uh, we could use the view CLI, but we can also just go over to this getting started here and grab the script here and drop this onto a new page or an existing page. So what I'm gonna do is hop over to VS Code. I have this folder here, view three tutorial, and I'm gonna create a view, whoops. Uh, let's create a new file and we'll call this counter2.html and so I'm just going to create some uh, basic HTML here and we'll call this the view to counter and so what I want to do is go ahead and drop that script tag on here and I'm going to create a new app here um, so I'm creating an element uh, div with the ID of app and now I'm going to create a script block here below. And the way that this would work now is we need to basically tell our page where view is going to be working with. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called VM. And we're going to create a new instance of view. And the way that view 2 works is when you create a new instance like this, you pass in a bunch of options. So this is an object. And there are some options that we pass into view one of which is element. So we're gonna say, um, this is where view is working with on the page. So in our case, it's the um, ID of app. Then we have some other options. We have things like data. So I have a data function that is going to return an object. And this is all of my reactive data within my application. So I'm gonna start with one called count and I'm going to initialize it to zero. So that is our data. Um, then we have methods. So this is another option that we have that we can pass in. And we have methods here. And I'm going to create a method called increment. And we'll do something with that in a second. And then I also have these. Um, I can add lifecycle hooks. I can also add um, something called computed. And so this allows us to create computed properties. Inside this computed object, I'm going to create a function called double and we'll do something with that in a minute. So let's head back up here to our app, and inside of here, I'm going to create a button, and on the button, I'm going to have an event handler called for a click event, and so when, it, when we click that button, I'm going to call the method increment. 
And so on this button, I'm going to display some text. I'm going to say count is, and then we'll display the count, and then double is, and we'll display the double. Because again, double is a computed property. Um, it looks like a method down here, but we can treat it as a property here. So that's all for the button. Now, when we click that button, I'm going to do something. So what I want to do is increment the count. So an easy way to do that is just say this dot count and increment it each time it is clicked. And then double, what we're going to do is we're just going to return whatever the count is, and we're going to multiply by two. So this is our basic example for view two. So if we want to run this here in Visual Studio Code, I'm using an extension called Live Server that will go ahead and run the example. And every time we click this, the count goes up by one and the double is double the count. So nothing terribly exciting there, but I wanna use this as a reference for what we're going to build in view three. All right, now depending on when you're watching this tutorial, if you're watching this in the future and view three has been released, then you might have a script version that you can just drop into a page. Um, but right now, Vue 3 is still in alpha, and pre-alpha, so we actually don't have a script that we can just drop into a page. What we need to do is actually build one from the source code on GitHub. So I'm gonna head back over to GitHub, and where the source code is right now is under this view next project. So if you go to uh, github.com slash vue.js slash view next, and I'll leave a link for that below, this is where you can find the source code for view three. Now again, depending on when you're watching it, um, not everything has been um, transitioned over or created for, for this. So you'll, you'll wanna take a look at kind of the release notes and where it is and what's done and what's not done yet. So the, what I'm gonna do is actually clone this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this repository. I'm gonna head back over to my Visual Studio Code. And what I'm gonna do here in this particular folder, now you may wanna do this somewhere else on your hard drive uh, so that you can use this for multiple projects. I'm just using it for this one for now. But as you can see, I'm in that directory. So what I'm gonna do is git clone and then that URL. And so that's going to create a new folder in here called view next. And that is done. So now there is, if you go back to the view next, there's a link for the contributing guide, which has some really helpful information in it about how you can grab the source code, how you can um, actually run it locally. So you need actually yarn. You can't run it with NPM. I think you could probably npm run build and get the same thing, but if you wanna build from source, you're gonna need yarn. So basically we need to install the dependencies and then run yarn build, and that's going to build all the public packages, and that's gonna give us what we need. You can do some things where you only build certain runtimes, but we're not gonna do that right now, we're just gonna kinda of build everything. So if I head back over there, in this directory, I have a view next, so I wanna cd into view next, and I'm gonna go ahead and run yarn install. And so that's going to install all the dependencies for this project. All right, so now with that done, I can go ahead and build it. I'm gonna go ahead and run yarn build. All right, and when that is done, if you go into the view next folder now and go into packages, view, dist, you'll see a view global and a view global dot prod. This is really what we wanna use. So we're just gonna drop this particular script right onto our page and we can create a view three example. So I'm actually gonna cop, actually let's just create a new shell first. Um, so we'll start with counter three.html and we'll create a new HTML Let's go ahead and call this view three counter. And so now we need to include the script for view three. So the way that we do that is we're, oops, we're just going to say source is equal to, now we're in view next, packages, and view, dist, and then the view global JS. So that's gonna give us everything we need to get started. What I'm gonna do is copy over this from the previous example. 
I'm going to create a script block and this gives us everything we need to get started. All right, so if you're curious like me, I wanna jump into the source here and kind of take a look at it. Um, take some time to go through this and, and start to understand what this is doing for you. Um, so it creates a variable called view, which exports a bunch of different things. So if you wanna look, you can go down to exports and see what um, this script actually makes available to you. And so what we want to do down here in our script is we want to get access to a couple different functions that we're going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say const and I'm going to use destructuring here to pull out what I need out of that view variable. So I'm going to say I want the reactive and computed and we'll set that equal to view. So now instead of creating, now if we go back to our view two example, so instead of creating a new instance of view, we're actually just gonna create an object and inside that object, we're gonna use the setup method. And this is the composition API, which I said, go through and read the documentation, it'll make a little bit more sense. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create something called my counter. And again, that's just an object. And inside of here, we're going to use a setup method. And inside the setup method is where we're kind of where we're going to do a lot of our work here. So in here, what I'm going to do, the first thing that I need to do is I need to create some reactive properties. Now, if I just create a property in here and call this count, this is not reactive. So we can't like have uh, tell view like, hey, this is a count and I want you to go ahead and pay attention to this and update the DOM when this changes. That's not that's not how it works. We have two things, two um, functions available to us in here called ref and reactive. Again, go back through the documentation, kind of read through the differences between them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called state and we're going to use that reactive function that we have uh, imported here. And we're saying, hey, I want to go ahead and create some reactive state. And this is going to take an object. And we're going to create our different properties here. So similar to what we were doing here, uh, we're going to create that here in this reactive function. So what I want to do is I'm going to create count is equal to 0. And then I'm going to create a property called double. Now what this is going to be equal to is a computed property. So the way we use computed is we've actually um, destructured that here. So we can go ahead and call it. So I'm gonna say computed, and that's going to be a function. And all that is is going to be our state.count. So remember, it's not this. There's no this object here. Um, this is our state, and that's the count. And we're just gonna multiply that by two. And so that's our computed property. So now we have our state set up. We also need to create a function for incrementing, right? So every time we click on the button, we need an increment function. So now I'm gonna create a function called increment. And all that's going to do is take the state count and increase it by one. So finally, the last thing that we have to do inside of this setup function is we need to return anything that we need available in our template. So in our case, we need to return state because that is something that we're going to use up here. And we're going to return increment because we're going to use that as well. Now the only difference here in our template is before we would call this count or double. Uh, because we're returning the object state, we got to reference state and then the property. So I'm going to say state.count and state.double. Okay, so that creates our counter. And then the last thing that we need to do with counter, let's go ahead and create an app variable here. And this is going to use view. And we're going to use a method in there called create app. And inside of that variable, we're going to use a method called mount. And so we're basically mounting my counter into the app element. So before we did this inside of the view instance options, here we're saying, all right, just go ahead and mount um, my counter, which is this. And I want you to make that available inside of the app 
element. So with all that done, uh, this should work. Let's hope so. Let's go ahead and run this with live server. And you can see that it works exactly the same. So that's just a little bit of intro. Now it's really hard to gauge like why you would want to do this. So for this simple example, you probably wouldn't want to use the composition API. Um, but when you get into uh, creating much larger uh, components uh, that have multiple functions and features and features that may be reused in other components, that's where the composition API really starts to shine. And it's important to learn it through a basic example like this. Um, but it really doesn't tell you the whole story. So again, I'm going to point you back through the documentation. If you get a chance, read through this. Uh, there's some really great information in here as to kind of why you would want to do it. So um, logic reuse, uh, where is, there's a really good example. So here it is. Um, so what is organized code? Um, logical concerns versus option types. So you, they, they give you a really good idea of like, hey, when you use the options API, uh, we're really breaking it down by like, um, we, we kind of stuff all of this feature and functionality into a single options API, where with the composition API, we can really kind of isolate like functionality by features. So um, again, documentation is really good. I'd go ahead and jump through there. Um, all the source code for this example, um, I'll go ahead and put it on my GitHub and I'll include a link to the repository below. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in more Vue 3 uh, examples and diving a little bit further into this, uh, just go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And as always, friends, happy coding. Yeah.